So why did you find the producers? Shh. So why? Did you find the producers? Of course I found the producers. Oh good, good, good. Did it, did it go well? It did not. Ah. What happened? They said, and yeah. I quote, you quote, you'd have to start producing your own material. How are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to go now. All, right. all good producers mm -hmm. are leaves. So I'm just absorbing the sunlight, producing my material. Oh, I see. Like, all the producing for an ecosystem. Yep. Wait. Yeah. Who was on the phone? I don't know, because we don't have producers. We don't have really. producers. No, We've no. never had producers. I don't know why you asked, did I call the producers? I don't know. I just, I just felt like it was the right thing to do, you know? I, I, I totally get you. I, totally, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I answered them as if they were producers. You did? So, so you asked my mum. She said something about oh. chicken Kievs. She oh, did. I love chicken Kievs. And she said, you have to produce your own material. Maybe she meant, you need to make a farm, raise some chickens, carry and on some chickens. Kievs. Oh, yeah, and some Kievs, which grow naturally in our environment. Vegans can have them. Can they? Yeah. Not yeah. the chicken, then. No, 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 just That's the Kiev bit. Yeah. Just the garlic bit in the middle. Anyway, so we're on to, you said something about autotrophs, did you? I did, I did, and we're on to producers in the, in the ecosystem, which is, an autotroph is a better name for it, which we use now. All good producers, leaves. That's the type of producer. There's two main types, really. There's leaves, which are like plants and stuff, and phytoplankton. They fit into two main things. Leaves mostly do photosynthetics, and phytoplankton mostly do chemosynthetics. That's correct. Chemosynthetics is chemicals, and you do chemical reactions. Uh, a lot of little sea plankton things, they do have light because they're nearer the surface. Then you get some that are in awkward caving systems where it can support life, but they have to do it via chemicals. Yeah. We have to focus today on the photosynthetic. Yeah, focusing on photos. And that's all to do with photosynthesis. We should learn all about a GCSE. But not enough. No, no, so no. we're going to leave you in the dust. But hopefully you'll follow. No, we won't leave you in the dust. No, not on purpose. We're, we're going to, like, drag you along. Yeah, drag you up yeah, to yeah. knowing about things you'll never need. Yeah, so you can walk on a mountain, there's a song I'd raise you up. Oh, now I feel silly. You do, don't you? Anyway, we've got the overall equation of photosynthesis. So let's get that up. Alright. So, this is the thing you learned at UCC, and this is an overall equation, as I said a few seconds ago, which means it's just sort of the outline, and it splits into two main parts. So you'd think it would be six knots of water, reacting with six lots of carbon dioxide producing that, but it's not. The CO2 and the water actually never meet. They never meet. It's like a tragic love story, but not at all like a love story. It's not very tragic. So that was a poor analogy, really. Sorry. So we'll start with the water. It's a light-dependent reaction. That means it needs light. It's light. Now this reaction we're going to split into light-dependent and light-independent. First, that has to happen is light-dependent. That's the way until it involves the water. But to start with, it doesn't need the water. Yep, so I'm going to just remind you the water's here. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to start off Okay. right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. That's always a good place to start. Right? Uh, always, always. So, the world was created... Oh, uh, no, not... A bit after that. A bit after that. Yeah. So I woke up for breakfast. A bit before that. Look at the picture. Look at the picture. Oh, what yeah. is that? What is that? That is a leaf. It's a leaf. That's right. right. So... Artistic talent there. We've zoomed in on the leaf, and we're going to. This is called a particular type of cell. It's the it is. palisade mesophile. Exactly, and you've got to be hot on your spelling. You have. That's what biology likes. They're not too definitiony, but they like. That's a, that's a net word now. They like big words that you have to spell. So we've zoomed in on this cell on this leaf. Yep, and this cell is a sort of roughly. There's a circle, and it's got a few little things in it. These little things are weird oblong watsits. No, they're not watsits. They're not. If anything, the quasars and All right. cheese and stuff. What, what are they called? Though? Well, I'm going to start with this first. You've probably heard of this. Mm -hmm. Chloroplasts. Ah, yes. Inside this is a chloroplast, and inside the chloroplast is a chlorophyll. Yep. And, in, and there's these things as well. The thylakoid. Means many of that. T-H-Y-L-A-K-O-I-D. Bit mean. And then here we have the stroma, which is used on the other side. They don't actually need to know the entire diagram for this process, but you don't need to later, so we should, uh... That was... 
That was really good, wasn't it? It was. I really liked the picture part. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Anyway. So, so you don't need to know all of that. No. So we're just doing this. So we've got the stroma, the thacoloid membranes, these oblong things, mm -hmm. the chloroplasts, and there's chlorophyll in there. Yeah, which makes it green. Absolutely. Light green. And since the process. So this is when water turns up. Not quite yet. Not quite. Water's yeah. a bit of a late You'd comer. Think. So firstly, we've got light. I'm going to represent with a squiggly arrow. That's a good plan. It's hitting this palisade piece of our cell. It's going to hit the chlorophyll in the thylakoid membranes. It's going to hit everything within these, which include electrons. Does indeed. And when photons hit electrons, if you did AS physics, you'll know. And if you don't, it's into an excited state. Yeah, so its energy level increases a lot, which means basically it leaves. Oh. Oh yeah, it, it leaves. And so the reaction, uh, it can do reactions. So what it does is you've got these electrons, I'm going to put them here, they're quite central in this. Yeah, quite central. And they're important in that way. They're going to move along the thylakoid membrane. Yeah. And how are they going to move along? Well, by a series of oxidation and reduction reactions, which we should be familiar with from GCC or from a chemistry. You don't have to know the actual re uh, reactions themselves. No, you don't have to know, they know that they are those. those. Yeah. When it takes part in each of these oxidation and reduction, it's going to release loads of energy, energy. Like constantly. And this energy goes to a thing called ADP, converting it to ATP, which will be used in this equation, well, equation, reaction over here. It is a T. Reaction over here, and it was it's going to provide energy. ATP. There you go. That thing. So that's that. So, that's that. so the electrons are going to release energy as they move along the thylakoid membrane. But as they move away from the top, that means this bit is now basically electron deficient. So it needs stuff. So a constant flow of electrons is needed. This when water turns up. This is indeed. All right. So we've got this water. It gets in through the roots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You should let me sure if you're familiar with that. How it works. And it's going to produce oxygen. So we need two lots of that to balance the yeah. equation. It's going to split up, basically, oxygen and hydrogen ions. Yes, so when it's got hydrogen ions, that means it's ripped electrons off, so it's going to, it can use the electrons to continue this yeah, electron constant, carry. Yeah, constant stream. Now, the electrons and the hydrogen ions boldly move together in a movement to do something rather, rather excellent. Because the electrons themselves haven't been used yet, just the energy from the reactions. Yeah, so they, they keep going down. And as they get to their end point, if you will, they move with the hydrogen ions and they hit this thing called NADP. They do and oh my god, what's wrong with me drawing P's as D's? I don't, I don't know why. Very upsetting. They hit this, and for this big reaction over here, we need it to be a reduced version of that. So what it does is it reduces it, and if you know what reduction is, it's when a gain of electrons. So that, well, that's what happens. The oxygen produced in the, when this water breaks up. It is, is your final product. Yeah, it's never used again, so it appears over here. And there you go. It's a very nice arrow in. Thank you. So this is our light dependent. And next to it, we're going to do our light independent. It doesn't need light, which isn't really true, is it? Because it needs to happen first. It needs to happen first. Well, I'm going to recap this while he writes that. So, All right. The photons of light hit the chlorophyll in the thylakoid membranes in the palisite mesophile cell where the chloroplasts are. This makes the electrons excited, makes them move along. They move along by oxidation and reduction things, which releases energy. The energy makes ADP into ATP. The electrons themselves, at the end of all of this, then get used with the hydrogen ions, NADP, to make reduced NADP after the water splits up into oxygen and hydrogen ions. Yeah, just, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. You have to write that quickly in your exam. Yeah. <laughs> That's how that happens. So... Let's move right. on to the CO2 side CO2 of things. CO2 one. Yeah, the CO2 arrives a bit quicker than the um, water did in the reaction before. Yeah. But to start with, we have some five long carbon chains. And these yep. are special names. So the, the five carbon long thing is ribose bisphosphate, or RUBP. Yeah, called. which we, we cut it down to. And this reacts with the CO2 via an enzyme. Yeah, to catalyze the reaction, the enzyme is... Rubisco. Uh, shortened version of the name. Ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase. Yes. It's yeah. an enzyme. It reacts this five carbon long with CO2 to make yes. it a six carbon long. It does, and that happens over here. But the six carbon long thing it makes has a name. It does indeed. And what's the name? It's glycerol. 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 Palace something. Phosphate thing. Anyway, it's not very stable. And it splits into three smaller carbon chains. You don't need to know what they are. But 
they immediately because they immediately get reduced. They do, and they get reduced because of this. This from the light's dependent reaction, it has its H plus, so it can go up here and reduce this six carbon long thing mm -hmm. into a three carbon long thing. That is a phosphate sugar. Because it at is. first it will just be a three car it'll be two three carbon long compounds. You don't want compounds, you want them as phosphate sugars, which is why they get reduced. And the energy provided for this reaction isn't the NADP. No, it just happens as well. It's the AD ATP converting back into the ADP. And that will provide the energy um, to break this, the, well, to use these three carbon long things and turn them into phosphate sugars oh. called GALP. Yeah, because it's a very long name for them, but GALP is the shortened version. I think you can just stick to the shortened versions in your yeah. exam. GALP would be acceptable. Um, it ends in three phosphate. Yeah. Got the glyceraldehyde, I think, something like that. Something like that. It's an aldehyde. Yeah. Something phosphate. And it's going to produce 12 of those altogether. It is. Now, of these 12, two of them are going to be the thing we need. Yeah. Our glucose, the hexose sugar. Put that down there. We can put a circle around there and link it up to here. And then you've got both your products in this reaction. Oh. Bit of an odd journey. It's going to go on there. What about the other ten, though? There's going to be another ten. The other ten are something substantially less helpful. They do indeed. They go back to this. They form together to make the five carbon long things. So... Let's go back to here. Five out of twelve. Sorry. Ten, ten out of twelve. twelve. They're five carbon long, though. That's what, that's what the fire came from. And this is also given the energy to happen by more ATP becoming... ADP. Yep, so that's the same thing, providing energy again. It's going to go back to produce this, and there you go. So to recap this one, you've got the IUBP reacting with CO2 because of the enzyme Rubisco, producing a six long thing, which is then going to break up into two, three long things. Both of these are going to become phosphate sugars because of the NADP reducing them, providing yep. energy from the ATP. Two of them is going to produce your actual thingy, and the other ten is going to go back around. What's that cycle called? That's called the Kelvin cycle. Not the bicycle. Not the bicycle. I use those to go places. Yep, I use the unicycle. Oh, that's nice. Now, in a plant, glucose is often used to make things. Yep, such like amino, acids. amino acids. Yeah, and stuff in the plant. You might be asked that as well. That's a thing. But this is quite large. You do have to know it all. Yep. Now we're going to get on to polar bears. We are polar bears. I like polar, polar bears. bears. Apparently you shouldn't hug them, though. No.